Hi everyone. So tonight or today the notes are going to be over the same type of things that we've been doing except using the elimination method. So the first thing we're going to do is look at these steps. So the elimination method is the method of combining two equations in standard form in order to so last time was substitution we used substituting one variable for the other to get our equation to one variable. This time we're going to eliminate the variable in a little different way. So we have, we'll start with our um, two variables, in our case, x and y, and we'll write the system. And then we're going to look for opposites that will eliminate one or the other. And solve, substitute, and check. So this will make more sense when I do an example. Okay. So Marcus is thinking of two numbers whose sum is, well, I wanted to show this some time, but whose sum is 89. The difference is 11. What are those two numbers? So taking the important information, so sum is 89, difference is 11. So we'll call the two different numbers x and y, because we don't know what they are. Oh, it's right here. So the sum is 89. So what is sum? That's adding difference. So sum is 89. So x plus y equals 89, but difference is 11. So we can assume it's going to be x minus y equals 11. So we're basically going to combine these equations to eliminate one of our variables. So since y minus y is 0, they cancel each other. So they eliminate each other. So let's see what happens. So we if we added these two equations together or combined them, we would end up with, let's see. Oops. So we have our line. Oh, now it's gone. Okay, so if we add these together, we would get x plus x. That's 2x, 2x, and then the y's just become 0. And that's what we're trying to do. And then 89 plus 11 is 100. Now we figure out what x is. x is 50. So now that we know that x is 50, we can use it in our equation and solve for y. So 50, so let's see. And you can use either equation. So I'm gonna try the first one. So we got 50 plus y equals 89. Subtract the 50 y equals 39. So our two numbers are 50 and 39. And we could check this by graphing. We could also check in the other equation. So that means 50 minus 39 should be 11. And yeah, that's the case. And when we check it by graphing, we should also get the same answer. So let's try some more examples. And I'm going to have to um, make some room here. So let's do this example. 3b plus f equals 19. And b minus f equals 17. So the first thing we need to do is we need to see like, 
Okay, are they in the same order? And luckily in this case, they are both in the same order. Now that we know cases okay, like BF number, BF number. Cool. So the second thing we need to do is figure out um, if I can eliminate one of them. And in this case, okay, 3B plus B, that's gonna be 4B, so that doesn't work, but F minus F equals zero. So that makes 4B, 26, 36. So now we have 4B equals 36, 36. Okay. So solve for variable that is left over. So once we get rid of the second variable, we can solve for this one. And this one is a pretty simple example. Okay, so now that we know what that variable is, we can plug variable into either equation. to find the second variable. So in this case, I'm just gonna use whatever one. I'll use B minus F equals 17. So I'm gonna say nine minus F equals 17. Okay, so I got minus nine. Neg equals, sorry, that's positive eight. Okay, but that's still negative one, so I need to divide by negative one. So I get F equals negative eight. So let's see if that works in our other equation. So supposedly it is nine, negative eight. You normally put them in alphabetical order. Okay, so we figured out that this first one is nine comma negative eight. So I'm going to have y'all do, yes, oops. I'm gonna have you do this one by yourself. However, I will, well, no, I'll do it with you. Okay, so let's do this one now. So we have two X plus Y equals seven. and 3x minus y equals negative 12. Okay, same thing. We're trying to get rid of x or y. So when I look at this, uh, which one can I get rid of? Well, this equals zero. So I'm going to do that. So when I combine them together, and this, these are easy because they don't have a number in front of them. We'll do those later today. Plus zero equals negative five. Okay, so now you got five X equals negative five. Now we just need to solve for X. And I get X equals negative one. Now we just need the second part. So let's see, I'll use either equation. Which one is gonna make my life easier? And they're about the same. So I'll just do the top one. Put that X number in. Two plus Y equals seven. Is he, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to skip a step there. So we end up with y equals nine. So when we check this, 
we should get negative one comma nine. So when we graph this, we end up with, that's handy, something that looks like And again, this is not going to be perfect, but, oh. Something like that. It looks kind of like that. Okay, so that is that problem. So on this next part, we have a simple word problem that we're going to have to figure out. So first, the sum of two numbers is 25 and their difference is seven. Okay, so we can use any variables, but generally, if you can choose, just use X and Y. So write a system of equations, look for opposites. Okay, so let's see the sum, so that's going to be adding, difference is seven. So the sum of two numbers, so X plus Y equals 25, and the difference would be X minus Y equals seven. And now I'm going to use the elimination method. So when I have them over here, first I'll combine them. So when I combine them, I get two X, and you don't have to write the zero, I'm just showing you as a placeholder what's happening to these Y's. And that becomes 32. So we get two X equals 32, divide each side by two and X equals 16. So now we just need to figure out the other one. Oh, I just realized it's really short. Um, so let's see, X minus Y equals seven. So let's see, 16 minus Y equals seven. Track 16 from both sides and we get negative nine. And you can't leave this as a negative. So you have to divide by a negative one. And we get y equals nine. So our two numbers should be 16 and nine. And I'm going to graph those and see if they check out. So when I graph those on two Desmos, they do indeed cross at 16 comma nine. So that tells me that I did indeed get this right. And the graph looks something like, Something like that. Okay, so this time the difference of the numbers is 18 and their sum is 42. So I'm going to explain this, but I want you to pause and try to do it your own, on your own. So go ahead and try to do that on your own and then start the video again. So difference is going to be subtraction. So X minus Y equals 18. The sum is 42. So X plus Y equals 42. I need to find the two numbers. So once again, I'll combine my equations. So when I combine my equations, I get two X and 
So every one that we've done so far, the Y's are eliminated, but just like in substitution, it can be X or Y. And this is 50, 60. So 2X equals 60. Divide both sides by two and we get X equals 30. Now we can use this X to find Y. So I'm gonna say 30, oh, X plus Y equals 42. 30 plus Y equals 42. Subtract 30, because we're always doing the opposite and we get Y equals 12. And another quick check. And when I check them on the graph, the numbers check out. So that tells me that I'm good to go there. Okay. So I'm going to show you the next couple problems using this um, frame that you have in your notes. So let's see, we're gonna do four X plus Y plus 13. And 3x minus y equals 1. Again, I am a very visual person, so having things like this graphic organizer just helped me. Um, so hopefully it helps you as well. Um, but if not, you don't have to write it out like this. Um, all right, so first I need to see, okay, do I need to, or can I eliminate X or Y? Some equations you can do either one. I mean, technically in every equation you can do it every one, but what is the easiest? So in my case, I think it's gonna be easiest if I eliminate Y. Now, I can tell that one minus one is going to equal zero. However, sometimes, the, these numbers don't match up. So I would have to multiply by something. So we're just gonna say multiply by one because we didn't change anything. And now we're going to add them. So that makes seven X plus zero equals 14. Okay, so we did that, added equations. So the next step is solving for the variable. So let's see, why am I using different color? So this time we have 7x equals 14, which makes it pretty easy. You just divide by seven, so in this case, we solved for X. So our other variable is going to be Y. So we know that X is two. So our Y, we need to plug back in. So I'm gonna say four X plus Y equals 13. My X is two. So I get eight plus Y equals 13 minus eight. And our Y should be five. So let's go to graph it and check it. And when I check it on the graph, again, that's where they cross. So that tells me I got it right. So hooray. So this is indeed two comma five. So this one, it gives you the answer and you have to check it. So let's see if this is right. And I'm just going to graph it. So just 
graph this to check. Okay, so down here at the special on these special ones, these are the ones where we um, like we can't just add them together. We have to do one little extra step. I'm going to use this again. Help us. So let's do this 2x minus 7, e or sorry. Just. 2x minus 7y equals 21, and negative 2x plus 7y equals negative 21. Sorry, I kind of ran out of room there. So we can tell that it's already going to be a little bit different than our other ones because the x's are the ones that are elim being eliminated as opposed to the y. So, well, actually, it could be either. So what happens when we combine these? So this is kind of like a big question mark, right? So let's just add them together. Multiply by one, nothing's changing. And so if I add if I add these together, sorry, I kind of ran off there. Um, two minus two is zero. Negative seven plus seven, zero. Twenty one minus twenty one, zero. So zero equals zero. Okay, so now this is a little bit different. Now, this works the same way as when we do substitution. So this tells us it either has no solutions or infinite solutions. Is zero equal to zero? Uh, yeah. So if this is true, then it's infinite solutions. So that one shows us that it's infinite solutions. So let's do the other one, and you can probably guess what they're going to show us, but let's go ahead and do this one. So this time we're going to have x plus 3y equals 8. 8x plus 3y equals 8, and negative x plus 3y equals 8. Oops. Okay, so now when I do this, um, this is kind of a big question mark, right? because you're really eliminating both. So this makes zero again, three minus three, zero, except this time this is 13. Does zero mm -hmm. equal 13? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does not. So this is false, which tells us that it is no solutions. Okay, and I'm back. All right, so since this is false, that's no solutions. Okay, so let's look at this part of your notes. So I wanted to look at the like thought process behind um picking which one to eliminate uh so that's why i pulled this up um so we're trying to figure out in each of these which one we're going to eliminate first so in this first one we have
So we need to figure out what we need to do in order to um, eliminate one of the variables. So looking at this first problem, we have x minus 2y equals negative 13 and 4x plus 2y equals 18. Now, which one, which variable should I eliminate by multiplying if necessary and adding the equations together? So my x's do not have the same coefficient or number in front, but my y's do. Well, okay, say same, like the same, but one is negative. Um, so I'm going to eliminate y by multiplying, but do I need to multiply? So y'all have not seen a case yet where you need to multiply because we can already, like these already add to zero. So we do not need to do that. So you can just cross it. So let's look at this next one. So we have negative two X minus Y equals negative five and X minus eight Y equals negative 23. All right, so now we're getting to a case where you have to multiply because these are not the same, these are not the same. So you could do either X or Y. When I look at these though, these, the Y has the same sign, they're both negative, but X and Y are like one's negative, one's positive. So I'm gonna go for this one. Now what, what plus negative two equals zero? Well, two. So we gotta make this instead of one X, we want that to be two X. And to get from one X to two X, we multiply by two. So we're going to eliminate X by multiplying, by first multiplying equation. Now this is already negative two, so we gotta make this one positive two. Equation B by two. Now let's do the next one. So X minus five Y equals seven, two X plus seven Y equals negative 20. Okay, uh, five and seven, yeah, I'm going to have to multiply both of those by something to make y's. So here I got two and we just figured out over here, this needs to be negative two. So I'm going to eliminate x by first multiplying equation a by negative two, because I have x and two x and I wanna make this one negative two x. And I'll show you guys one of these in a minute. Okay, here's another one. So 3x and 7x. Well, again, I could do x's, but I would have to change both of these numbers. And then here I have negative 4 and 1. So this is going to be the easier one, the y's, to eliminate because I can just make these y's 4y. So I'm gonna eliminate y by first multiplying equation b by four, since I already have negative four y and y. So we're multiplying these to where when you add them together, they should equal zero. Well, just like your chosen x or y. Okay, so another one, six x plus four y equals 16 negative two X plus Y equals negative three. Okay, another, another one where six and negative two. So technically I could multiply this X times three and then I would have negative six X and six X. But I also see that this Y is a one. Usually the ones that have one, like if X or Y has a one in front of it, you wanna go for that one because it's gonna be easier. So here, well, generally speaking, generally, I guess I would go for the ones that have the smaller number that I have to multiply it by, or the ones that end up being less work. So it really depends. You could really do either one on this one, but I'm going to try to make this negative four Y. 
So I'm going to eliminate y by first multiplying equation b. by negative four. Okay, last one. Negative six x, negative three x, y, and negative three. Okay, so I could multiply this by negative two for the y, for the x, sorry, and get negative six, or six x and negative six x, or I see this has coefficient of one. I could multiply this top one by three. Multiplying a by three. Okay, so now that we figured out how to eliminate them, let's actually try one of these. So I'm not gonna try the first one because that that's not really multiplying them, but um, we're going to do the um, one of these problems. So let's see, we'll do 16. So 16 is negative 2x minus y equals negative 5. And x minus 8y equals negative 23. Number 16 on those elimination problems. It doesn't ask for it, but you do have a place for a couple extra examples, and this is what we will do there. So we decided on here that we were going to eliminate x by multiplying b by two. So let's see, we're still gonna multiply um, multiply our x. So let's see, we want to eliminate x this time. And to do that, we have negative 2x, and we want to make this 2x. So to do that, we already said that we're going to multiply by 2. Do I need to multiply this top one? Um, no. So multiply by one. But I need to multiply this bottom one by two. Now the key is, I can't just multiply this x. I had to multiply everything. So you must multiply entire equation because otherwise you're just changing the equation. Like you're not, it's not gonna mean the same thing it's gonna be an entirely different problem. So that is super, super important. Okay. So let's multiply then. So we're not changing this top one, but we are changing this bottom one. So we have to multiply each term by two. So we would get x times two, that's two x. Negative eight y times two, that's negative 16 y. And negative 23 times two, that's negative 46. Oops, equals negative 46. So see how like each term I had to change. I can't just change the x, so super important. So now I can add these together. So from here, everything's the same. Negative two plus two is zero. That ends up being negative 17 y. And this is negative 51. So now let's solve for y. And uh, sorry, that says negative 17 y equals negative 51. which equals three. And I divide by negative 17. Move that five a little better. So y equals three. So now I'm gonna take that y and stick it back into my original equation. Now I could do it 
after I multiply it, but you don't really have to. Um, I would pick the one, whichever one is easiest. Uh, we're looking for x. So my original equation here has just x by itself. So I'm going to use that one. So x minus 8 times 3 equals negative 23 minus 24 equals negative 23, add 24, add 24, and x equals 1. So this means that when I graph these, I should get a point, like these two should cross at 1 comma 3. So I'm going to go over and check. So when I put the equations in, I can see that they do cross at 1 comma 3. Okay. So this is one example of a time that we have to multiply. So let's go back here. Let's see, which one should we do next? Let's do number 19. So we're going to do number 19, since this time we have to multiply it by a negative. So we're going to start with our equation, which is, uh, yeah, 19. So that is 6x plus 4y equals 16, and negative 2x plus y equals negative 3. So we said that we were going to eliminate y. Now, technically, we could do either one. And to do that, we're going to multiply by whatever makes this 0. So 4 and so 4 minus 4 equals 0. So we want to make this negative 4. Since it's 1, we're going to have to multiply that times negative 4. This doesn't change. Now I'm going to use that times negative 4. Remember everything. So negative 2x times negative 4 is negative 8x. y times negative 4, negative 4y. A negative 3 times negative 4 equals 12. Now this is an area where you can easily make a small mistake in multiplying your negatives and completely get a wrong answer. So let's see, 6x minus 8x is negative 2x. This is up being 0. And 12 plus 16, that's 28. So negative 2x equals 28. Again, not too bad to solve for x. Okay. Swell. So now I know that x equals 14. So now that x is 14, I'm going to use this equation. Again, it could be either one, but I'm going to use the bottom one. So I'm going to say two, negative 2 times 14 plus y equals negative 3. We got negative 2 times 14, negative 28, plus y equals negative 3. Add 28, y equals 25. So this should go through the point 14, comma 25. So let's check and see if it's right. 